Welcome to the College Football Bros. I'm Michael Newman. I'm Ryan Newman. And I'm Trey Newman. So we just ranked every starting quarterback in the Power Five, so be sure to check out those five episodes, uh, both on our YouTube feed or podcast if you prefer. Uh, now we're going to take a look at the G5 and Independence and rank the best 12 quarterbacks from there. So uh, these were ranked by Trey. Ryan, who did, who did Trey have 12? Uh, we're going to Central Michigan. We had uh, Daniel Richardson. Yeah, I think last year, his redshirt freshman year, he played really well, and I, I think he's due for a, a breakout campaign this year. He averaged over eight yards per attempt, 24 touchdowns, only six picks. Not bad for your, your first go-around, and I feel like if he shows even modest improvement, he'll be one of the top Mac quarterbacks this year. All right, moving on to number 11, uh, quarterback possibly – uh, replacing Desmond Ritter. He's in a battle to do that, but it's Evan Prater at Cincinnati. Yeah, this is a tough quarterback race to predict. Uh, he's 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 dealing, he's dealing going up against Ben Bryant. Uh, you know, Cincinnati fans probably hope Evan Prater wins the job. He's the, the highly touted recruit. He played sparingly last year, but his athleticism and playmaking ability – kind of gives Cincinnati maybe a, a higher ceiling. But Ben Bryant, he's no slouch. He he was on Cincinnati before before transferring to Eastern Michigan. He threw for over 3,000 yards there last year. Uh, so he came back, and and he's in the race. But no matter who it is, they, they lose a lot of production. But the offensive line is mostly intact. They've recruited well enough to, to still be the top dog in the AAC. So in my opinion, Evan Prater will be the, the guy, and he'll thrive. Fair enough. Um, all right, let's move on to number 10. We have uh, another Matt quarterback. We got Brett Gabbert from Miami of Ohio. Yeah, he's he's really only played two seasons, and last year he threw for nine yards per attempt, 26 to 6 touchdown to interception ratio, and he seems to just be trending up. Uh, the second half of the year, he put up some big numbers, ended up leading them to a bull victory. So he's kind of stamp, stamped himself as a contender to be the, the top quarterback in the MAC next year. So it should be fun to watch him in some uh, midweek November MAC action. Okay, moving from the MAC to uh, in, uh, another independent here. We've got actually, this is the first independent on the list, I should say. Notre Dame's Tyler Buckner. Uh, very talented, high ceiling, but yeah. hasn't proven it so far. Yeah, I mean that's that, the thing. That sounds and, and negative. For, he just hasn't had the opportunity, yeah. <laughs> right? He has not. Jack Cohn was there last year, and but he's also not a lock for the job. There's there's Drew Pine, but uh, but Buckner has the upside. He's explosive, dangerous. Uh, they used him a lot last year to kind of mix it up with Cohn, especially on the ground. He averaged over seven yards per carry on on forty six attempts. So his legs are obviously an asset. You know, the question is, can he throw it? effectively that's that's the question you know it was a small sample size last year of course but he he threw three touchdowns three picks so who knows um but he also he has the benefit of throwing to one of the better tight ends in the country that's coming back michael mayer uh lorenzo styles on the outside maybe could break out for him so he's one of those guys on this list that could could obviously climb if he proves it as a passer yeah for sure um, all right, let's move on to number eight. We have Logan Bonner from uh, Utah State. Yeah, I've always I've liked Bonner. Uh, he was really solid and effective at Arkansas State, splitting time with Lane Hatcher, uh, and he took it to another level at Utah State last year following Coach Blake Anderson. He ended up setting five school records. He threw for three, 36 touchdowns. He led Utah State to be one of the more surprising conference champions a year ago. And they topped it off by beating Pac-12 Oregon State in their bowl game. Okay, going to number seven, Seth Hennigan of Memphis. Yeah, this is a little bit of kind of a future play. That's why I had him above Bonner, just because he was a true freshman last year, threw for over 3,000 yards, eight and a half per attempt. Uh, he led the country amongst all true freshmen in multiple categories, including 25 touchdowns. You know, you would think he would only kind of build off of his maiden season and be one of the top AAC quarterbacks this year. Yep, I can definitely see that. Uh, all right, let's move on to number six. Uh, we have Frank Harris from UTSA. 
Yeah, I mean, UTSA, they had a breakout year last year, and it was largely in part due to Harris's improvement. Uh, his jump from 2020 to 2021 was as good as there was last year. I mean, he threw for 27 touchdowns, over 3,000 yards, but the difference is his ability to run the ball helps him and really helps this offense. He ran for over 500 last year, 15 touchdowns on the ground the last couple seasons. I'm a, I'm a Frank Harris fan. Yeah, man, he was – I was – Looking back at his numbers from last year, I was like, wow, I forgot how good they were. He had a really yeah. good season. Number five, another guy who stepped up his game last season, uh, Clayton Toon of Houston. Yeah, and it's a little just surprising just because he's he's been around there so long. But last year, he really put it together. Um, he elevated his game. He, he had a – he elevated the passing percentage from about 60% up to 68 last year over 3,500 yards, 30 touchdowns. I mean, gaudy numbers. And he can also run the ball. He had over 100, 100 attempts last year. And Dana Holgerson, he's built this team to kind of have a strong 2022. Uh, they return his favorite receiver, Nathaniel Dell, one of the best in the conference. And the team as a whole, they they finished with 11 wins and a bull win against Auburn. So there's some confidence going into the year. I like Toon. Yeah. Yeah, I think he's, uh, he's going to have another good year here. Um, moving on to... Uh... We got Tanner Mordecai at number four uh, at SMU here. Yeah. Um, I, not a total given he'll be the starter. I don't know why he wouldn't. There's Preston Stone is is there. But but Mordecai, he was the transfer from OU. He completed almost 70% of his passes, 39 touchdowns. He was number one in the conference in a slew of categories. Uh, you know, you might be worried that he lost Sonny Dykes as the head coach, but Rhett Lashley comes in. He knows how to coach an offense. He's already familiar with SMU, having been the OC there a couple years back. So I, I like Tanner Mordecai. Okay, number three, a guy who has come up on this podcast a lot. We're, we're all pretty high on him, Jaron Hall at BYU. Yeah, I, I, people are probably going to get kind of sick of us talking up Jaron Hall. Maybe we're building him up too much, but I'm just a huge fan. Uh, Almost nine yards per attempt, 20 to five touchdown rate to interception ratio. And he's a dual threat. We know he's, he's good with his legs and you just think another year of development, he could potentially be a a superstar, even though they lost Algier at running back. They got a great transfer, Chris Brooks uh, to help him out in the backfield. The line seems like a strength. He's got Puka Nakua coming back, Gunnar Romney at wideout. Hall should make BYU a, a fun team to watch this fall. They got, yeah, they got pretty much everybody coming back. They're they're returning a ton, other than Algier. They offense, defense, they're gonna be fun to watch. Um, all right, moving on to number two, we have Jake Hayner at Fresno State. Yeah, uh, another one of my favorite quarterbacks to watch he's he's one of the top quarterbacks in the country really uh over two two thirds uh of his passes are completed four thousand yards 33 touchdowns last year losing to Kalen DeBoer isn't ideal but Jeff Tetford is no slouch coming in um his star targets also come back Jalen Cropper had a ton of ca- 85 catches uh they got a 97 catch transfer from Cal uh, watching him is just it's it's a lot of fun it just seems like a guy a leader that that players can follow. I mean, I remember watching him last year against, uh, he kind of willed his team to victory against UCLA. So he's, he's a fun one. Those 97 catches from Cal must've come over multiple seasons. Cause I don't, I don't remember. A yes. Cal guy yes. 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 No. <laughs> yeah. That'd be All a pretty right. darn good year. <laughs> I was like, I don't know about that. Number one, uh, pretty hard to disagree with this one. Grayson McCall, yeah. coastal Carolina. Yeah, clear number one, one of the most efficient quarterbacks we've ever seen. Uh, And you thought after his breakout year a couple seasons ago, teams might adapt to him, but no, he's he's a freak. 54 touchdowns and six picks in his last two years, and he's a he's a good runner in their the fun coastal offense. Uh, So there's just you know there's a ton of accolades and awards that he's already achieved, and I'm sure more are coming. So he's one of the top quarterbacks in the country. Okay, first year where he's going to have to prove himself a little more just because he loses a lot of pieces oh coast loses a lot it loses a lose everything so it it we'll see I, I mean he's he's great but i just how how can he will this team even without all those guys yeah will be fun to see um yeah. okay 
let's get to the full list here of your your 12 guys. Um, Ryan, did you have any snubs, any disagreements with the list? No, I actually didn't. Um, I thought I, I, there's not one that I have a major disagreement with at all. I My list might have looked the exact same here, so nothing for all right. me. Um, I, I agree. I, th- I thought it was a really good list. Um, just if I'm going to name some honorable mentions, maybe more than snubs. Uh, oh. Chase Bryce, App State. Uh, Chris Reynolds, Charlotte. Daquan Finn at Toledo. Came the starter midway through last year and played really well. So he could uh, he could break out. But yeah, other than that, I mean, it's not like any of those guys has to be on the list. I, I, those are just right. other names out there. Yep. I'm yeah, exactly. also curious about Lane Hatcher. Uh, he's going to Texas State, so tougher situation. But with when he was with Blake Anderson at uh, Arkansas State, yeah. he was good. So um, yeah, last year was a bit yeah. funky. Uh, it was weird. Yeah, it was a rough he, year for Arkansas State. Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, thanks for watching this episode of the College Football Bros. Our next episode, uh, we're going to rank the top fifteen quarterbacks overall in the country and uh grayson mccall certainly has a good chance to be on that list maybe jay kaner jaron hall tanner mordecai they've all they've all got a chance as well so be sure to check that episode out and we'll see you then you've been watching the college football bros be sure to subscribe here on youtube and in your podcast app for college football content all year round for bonus episodes and access to our discord chat join our patreon at patreon.com slash college football bros Thanks for watching.